Hey, hello, how are you guys? Right here in my camera bag, I have the brand new Fujifilm X-H1. I brought it out here into the middle of Wyoming to show you guys a first look at some of the standout features. And let's just get into it. It's cold out here. Hey guys, I'm Seth K. Hughes. I'm a Fujifilm X photographer. Fujifilm sent me this beta model X-H1 to test out here in Wyoming. And this is not a sponsored video. These are simply my opinions. And I wanted to show you guys some of the robust new features because it's brand new to the X-Series lineup. Let's dive into the menu and take a look at what's under the hood here. As you probably heard, with this camera, Fujifilm is stepping up their game with video. And I'm gonna show you the three best video features first. Right here in the shoot settings, we have in-body image stabilization activated. And in the movie settings, internal F-Log recording is switched on. And high speed recording is selected for 120 frames per second. You might be asking, well that's great Seth, what does that mean? It means that now you can shoot cinematic, overcranked, handheld video footage like this. I shot this footage with my 35mm 1.4 prime lens. It's all handheld. That sequence was color graded, but let's back it up and have a look at the raw F-Log version. So here's ungraded with 12 stops of dynamic range. And here's graded. The new Eterna film simulation looks like this. Filmmakers have been using Fujifilm's Eterna color negative film since the 1930s for motion pictures. It has a soft color, low contrast, rich shadows, and beautiful skin tones that hardly require any color grading in post. There are some great autofocus enhancements for video with the X-H1 too. You can customize the speed or smoothness of focus shifts, which is nice for video because you can slow it down to produce a more subtle effect. Take a look at this low light example of autofocus as I go from background to middle ground to a random cow lurking in the bushes to foreground. And here's another example. Check out how nice and slow this focus shifts from foreground to middle ground to background. You can also fine tune the tracking sensitivity for objects moving through the frame. Another biggie is the new addition of the linear manual focus, which finally makes focus pulling and racking much easier. For me personally, I'm plenty satisfied with those features alone, but let's keep going. In addition to what we just covered, the IBIS, F-Log, and high-speed recording at 1080p, some other standout video features include 200 megabit per second 4K files, face detection while shooting 4K, video specific custom picture settings, 180 degree angle shutter speeds, and time code for syncing multi-camera footage in post. Plus, it's the little things like the ability to create file folders now in camera. By the way, when you go back into the menu, the interface finally remembers where you left off. The camera is hefty and well made, but it's definitely bigger than my X-T2, which I'm not too psyched about. But that's the trade-off for accommodating the image stabilization. With a larger body, you get more improved ergonomics like a better hand grip, taller dials which are easier to use with gloves in cold temperatures, and a resolution bump on the EVF, 3.69 million dots. And this protrudes out to keep your nose grease off the back of the LCD screen. 
The sub window is a nice perk with this larger body because when it's on, you can see your exposure settings. And when it's off, it shows your remaining shots, remaining video time, battery level, and whether or not you remember to reload your card slots. Again, it's the little things. And then there's the vertical power grip. Because I prefer to roll lean and mean, I'm only going to bust this beast out on special video productions, but it adds 30 minute 4K recording, headphone audio monitoring, and obviously more power with two extra batteries and some additional performance boosting functions. My opinion on the downsides. Size and weight is a big deal to me, so it's hard to adopt a larger APS-C body. There's no 10-bit video yet. Myself and so many others would love to see a 180 degree flip screen. And the new exposure comp button is awkward to deal with, but I think there's a way I can map that to the front dial. Otherwise, if you haven't figured it out, I really enjoyed using this camera. Okay guys, that's all I've got for you now. I want to hear from you down in the comments. What do you think of this new X-H1? And do you think Fujifilm is on the right track here with this camera? Is there anything that you wish that it had that it doesn't? Please let me know in the comments down below. Signing off and I'll see you down the road.